Hello everyone, my name is Juliet and I'm a fourth year communication student at SFU. Today I'm very excited to share my project with you. Before getting started, I want to respectfully acknowledge that the Burnaby campus of SFU, which is also where I live, is located on the unceded traditional Coast Salish territories of the Musqueam, Selwatus, Squamish, and Coquitlam peoples. As an international student, I'm aware that I'm a part of the continuous colonialization project, and I'm privileged to be here to present my work. The project I'm going to share today is a creative video project that pays close attention to the reconciliation progress, particularly with the partnership between Comox First Nation, which is located on Vancouver Island and as a field department of archaeology. My goal for this project is to use digital storytelling technologies to formulate a story through the indigenous perspective. Randy Frank and Corey Frank, who are the members and guardian watchmen of Comox First Nations, will be featured in the video to tell the stories of their losing history. Um, before showing the video, let's first talk a little bit about cooperation and cultural heritage engagement. There's no doubt that preserving the cultural heritage is important because they can help people to define their cultural identity and to engage social cohesion. But the question is how? I'll start from explaining the concept of participatory culture, which claims that the cooperation between heritage communities, including cultural institutions and educational organizations it's beneficial to promote broader participation in preserving the cultural heritage. In the case of the partnership, we can see a couple layers of collaborations. Frank brothers think that the cooperation with SFU has not only preserved the historical sites, but also encouraged the youth to be more involved in learning and respecting the history. And I'll show you guys more of that later on in my video. Um, Moreover, my entire class, including myself, learning the concern directly from Comox First Nation peoples themselves and help create the video to address this issue using their own words is also an example of cooperation for cultural heritage engagement. So that comes another important thing that I've learned through this process, which was the importance of digital storytelling to engage indigenous first person narratives towards reconciliation. Um, I think most of us will agree that stories are powerful. The narratives of history, like what happened in the past, as well as what's happening now to indigenous peoples in Canada are still heavily dominated by the European settler perspective. So normalizing indigenous first person narrative is vital to the reconciliation process. So I wish to use digital storytelling technologies to promote Comox First Nation people's voices and alter the public perception of this issue that has been hugely influenced by the dominant sellers ideology. I'm aware that reframing the narrative is not enough to change the power dynamic, but hopefully it could increase public engagement and promote social change, which is also the goal of my project, as I mentioned before. Um, okay, I'll stop talking right here and start sharing my project. I manage the Guardian Watchman Department for the Comox First Nation, which is a very rewarding job. Growing up, we were pretty fortunate to be where we were. The past is important, and all these sites have different stories to tell us. We just have to ask the story in the right way, and then we can, we can learn. Some of the most important things and valued things is our archaeological sites. Things that you want saved for future generations, um, logging and, and wood and fiber for future carvers as well, because there's so much and it gets so developed here that we're losing a lot of these things. And uh, it's not something that we can just snap our fingers and have it all stopped and kind of restore everything. So this sense of importance of the prehistory in general, right? Where, you know, like here, folks at KFN can look around and see that shellman being developed and that shellman being developed and this shellman being developed all concurrently. 
Um, and we know we're losing that history. Each of these sites are different and they've got this unique history to tell of who knows what's going on there, right? With the Guardian Watchmen, we, um, it's, there's a lot involved. It's kind of a cross between fisheries, conservation, forestry, archaeology. My brother Corey Frank, who's our, our manager of our Guardian Department, he did some, some work down on the beach down here on Bayside. We're losing a lot of land there and a lot of artifacts and a lot of history and, and bones, like actual human remains. So he took the initiative to, to kind of start rip wrapping it, filling it in with more land. So we're actually gaining more land back now as opposed to losing it. Our beach over on Bayside Road has been eroding away for decades. Um, we've seen the bones and everything else falling out ever since we were little kids. So. Through this job, it became apparent that this needed to stop. So it felt really good to take care of that part of the beach and make sure that no, no more of our ancestors' bones have been washed away. Just us walking on the beaches, um, you know, GPSing fish traps and fish weirs. We found uh, spearheads down here. We found skull caps from human remains, all kinds of lithics. And that's all just down on the beach right here, small arrowheads or broken parts of arrowheads. Right now with the Guardian group, is we're doing a little bit of archaeology work, but we're, a lot of it now is based in Sayward. Because it's such a, um, a massive site and it's so rich with knowledge and, and information that it's been capped off. So it's basically clear on the top and then it goes right down to the glacial till. So, Everything's there, basically, what you need to know, and the people that were there, and herringbone, salmon bone, everything. I think it's important, you know, tangible link to the past, a source of pride about um, the complexity of their culture and the artistry that went into it, and no doubt the cultural meanings behind whatever was going on there. I think it's a sense of pride that it's, you know, it's on their reserve as well, too, so they have total control over that process. No one else is coming in and doing it without their complete consent. Um, they own those pebbles, so they're going back to them and they're very happy to have them back. Um, I think it's a, a big source of pride um, and identification with their ancestors. I think archaeology is very important and especially working together with groups like SFU. We're not going to have all the expertise we need, but to be able to share not only our, our sites for study, but to share the knowledge that comes out of that. Uh, for us, it's invaluable. I think having the SFU students and, and the professors come, and I think it's a good thing because that, it's just going to encourage our youth and our younger folks as they keep doing this over the years to get involved as well. And I think the more knowledge our youth have, the more respect they're going to have for the culture and the land themselves. Looking back to when I was a child and how many rocks I skipped across the river that might have been pendants, right, was kind of makes you stop and think and how many things we actually just threw away as opposed to, you know, looking at them and finding them as a child. And I actually learned a ton of stuff. Like archaeology is one of my favorite parts of my job. So it was kind of nice to get down there and learn and see and find the ages of certain things that they had. And, you know, there's just so many cool things that you can learn from. We'd like to see the area of study that we're doing sort of expand not just one site but there there are many other sites that we have that i would love to see you know the sfu group come in and and open up so absolutely amazed with the groups that have come over and look forward to you know carrying it on into the future Okay, that will be the end of my project. Before I finish, I also want to express my appreciation to all the people who have contributed to this project. Without their contribution and support, I will not be able to enjoy the honor of presenting at this conference. Thank you everyone for being here with me today. I hope you had a great time. Bye.